Greetings viewers, if you click the video link, you're here to listen to me talk about height over bore. So what exactly is height over bore? Well, so it is a pretty basic concept based off of what it's actually uh, being said for your height over bore. This weapon is safe, it is unloaded. There is no live ammunition in the room that I am in. So our bore is basically our barrel where the round or projectile comes out of the weapon. And that height that we're referring to over it is the height of your optic. I know a lot of people uh, now are starting to run higher and higher optics, things like the GBRS mount, which raises things up. I know things like that are good if you are shooting with NVGs, and also it's been said that it is to help with your situational and awareness. So when you have your cheek weld on the weapon and you're looking down the optic, you're able to have your head up a little bit more so you can see things that are going on around you rather than scrunching your head down to the weapon and it kind of lowering your uh, your visual acuity a little bit. But raising that weapon up higher than your bore kind of brings its own set of, I don't wanna say challenges, but it brings some more math into the equation. And so if you're not already familiar and you haven't already clicked off the video, then uh, you're still curious about this and why why is that even matter? Why, why do I care about height over bore? What if I put my optic six inches over the top of the weapon and away from the muzzle? Well, if you think about the way a pistol is designed and how close the uh, sights are on the slide to the barrel, there's a lot less distance than if we're looking at the center visual uh, area of our optic here to our barrel. And probably the easiest way to demonstrate and kind of show you that, um, I'm going to have to use the target behind me, which is why I have it posted up here. And I'm going to kind of try and get a good angle so you can see what I'm looking at and help demonstrate this point. All right, so again, this weapon is unloaded. It has been safety checked prior to the filming of this video. There is no ammo in this room. There is nobody else anywhere here around me. I am home alone today. I am left unsupervised. So we're aiming at our target, right? So what I'm gonna do is if I were to look straight down the center of my optic and put the center dot for this EOTech reticle right here in the center of the bullseye, and I get it lined up, my barrel is touching the target right down here where the nine is. So that's a, uh, that's a decent distance down below. So. If you're used to doing things like playing Call of Duty or something and you uh, you just put the bullseye on the target, you pull the trigger and the target goes down, that does not uh, always work at every distance. So let's take a look at this real quick. So if I measure from the center of that X down to the nine, that's approximately four and a half inches. That may not seem significant, but if there's one thing that I've learned in my life, it's that you can do a lot with four and a half inches. So again, why, why is that significant? Why does it matter? You're not gonna be, uh, if you're up that close to a target, you're just gonna poke them with the barrel and shoot anyway, right? You're not gonna use your sight. Well, that's just kind of a gross oversimplification to kind of get the point across and just show what, uh, what it is that I'm trying to explain and describe and show you why height over bore matters. So I'm gonna use some fancy high-tech software here to kind of show you the next point that I'm going to make here and just kind of make it make a little bit more sense in the uh, the longer range and why again height over bore matters when it comes to more distance added between you and your target. All right so here we are with our fancy software here with our high speed uh, Tavor 7 and our made up high speed optic here again I'm just doing this to kind of make it a little bit easier to make sense and give you that visual uh, representation. I am more of a visual learner so makes it easier for me to learn. Hopefully that will be helpful to you. All right, so we're gonna use the red color. We're gonna draw a line coming out of our barrel here. So this is going to signify the path of our bullet. So yes, I understand it's not gonna shoot exactly flat, but for, again, this is just the easiest visual demonstration I can make. So we've got our targets here. This particular one is 50, 75. I have a 100 yard here one you can't see because the screen's too uh, stretched out. But, Let's just pretend in this example that we have a 50 yard zero. So now we are gonna use a blue line to come out of our optic. So this is gonna represent the center of the optic and where we're looking through on the weapon. We're gonna come all the way out here and where those two lines intersect, right here, you can see this is where they cross. This is our 50 yard zero. So our weapon is dialed in. When we put the center of the bullseye on our optic, on the 50 yards, we're going to hit dead center every time, taking out any factors of the gun moving or improper uh, technique. The thing's locked in, and we're using some kind of mechanical device to shoot, and every time it's shooting out the bullseye on the target at 50 yards. So now what we need to look at is look at this line. So 
again, like I mentioned, the higher up your optic is mounted, the more steep of an angle that this is going to be from here to here. Ideally, if your optic or sighting system could be mounted to the barrel, you'd have a lot less of a uh, the angle here. But if you look, and it's even demonstrated right here on the 75 yard target, right now our optic is higher, meaning that our round is actually impacting lower anywhere between our gun and that 50 yard target. But then once we get past it, rounds are now impacting higher than where our optic is looking. So if we were to put this optic this optical path, basically our bullseye dot in the center of the bullseye, our rounds are gonna end up going higher. And again, this is significant. So now let's say you're shooting at a target that's at seven yards, which is a lot of times when I do the shooting portion of my videos, I'm shooting at that distance because again, it is the average distance that most people uh, engage in a gunfight, as well as the average distance that a trained officer can draw their holstered pistol and fire on a subject that is charging them with a knife that is how much ground that person can cover up is 21 feet before the cop's able to fire their weapon. So now we've got our seven yard target here. Well, again, we look at it. If we look at where our optic is looking, we're shooting significantly lower. So just like I demonstrated with the uh, exaggerated demonstration with the target, it was four and a half inches lower than where our optic was looking and where the barrel was gonna put a hole in the target from our projectile. So again, many people already know this, and apply it but sometimes under pressure it may be a little bit harder to think about and something you're not thinking of again this could be significant you've got your rifle dialed at 100 yards imagine you know the path that that's going to take and how the distance you're going to have if we're looking at again the seven yard you've got that let's say four and a half inch distance at 50 yards we're dead on so obviously 25 would be somewhere in between so there's going to be a little less deviation get to 75 out to 100 so now imagine we get out past 100 yards and how, uh, how drastic that drop and that difference is going to be. So you are responsible for every single round that leaves your weapon when you pull the trigger. So you need to know where your bullets are going. So this is definitely something that you need to know for your particular weapon system. So there are general guidelines. I know a lot of people are of the mindset that I'm going to do a 25-yard zero because the way that the bullet actually travels when it comes out of the gun and you account for the bullet drop, that 25 yards is going to, at 300 yards, be around the same area. Now, again, on my demonstration here, the bullet is coming out in just a straight laser beam. It's not accounting for drop. Again, the further the distance you go out, the further it's going to go down, and that is going to affect things as well. So again, a lot of people stick with that 25 slash 300 yard zero, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's worked for many years for many people. The problem is, is that does not apply to every gun. If you've got a nine and a half inch 300 blackout or a 16 inch 556 or a 20 inch 308, and depending on what bullet grain weight you're shooting, what quality and brand of bullet you're shooting, the twist rate of your barrel, the height of your optic, it's all going to make a huge difference. And you can't just go on Reddit and ask a question and get a straight answer. You know, we already knew that anyway, but it's not a simple math equation. You're not going to ask a question and get one specific answer, and that's going to fit everybody's use case scenario. You, again, are going to have to figure these things out. Once you get your weapon set up the way that you want it, You've got your barrel length, you pick your bullet that you like, you've got the right weight, the barrel twist, the barrel length, the optic and the optic height that you've chosen. You then need to go out for yourself. You need to figure out what zero you're gonna go with. And then you need to figure out where your rounds are impacting based off of that zero at different ranges. If you zero at 50 and that's the only distance you ever shoot at and something happens and you need to make that seven yard shot inside your house while someone's holding your family hostage, you need to know where those rounds are going because I think the last thing you're probably going to want to do is shoot a hostage slash family member. I don't think they're going to appreciate that very much either. Again, get your weapon zeroed, get it where you're happy with it, and then shoot at a seven yard target, shoot at a 25 yard, a 50 yard, a 75, a hundred, stretch it out as far as you can possibly go. So you at least know in your mind, yes, wind is going to be a factor depending on the weather conditions when you're shooting. However, again, you're still responsible. You can't just go, oh, well, the wind blew my round off. Sorry, I, uh, or I didn't mean to shoot that innocent bystander. Well, that's not going to be a good legal defense. You are responsible for all of your rounds. So you need to know this information and you need to know it for your weapon system. And then again, you get another rifle and you get it set up with a different optic, shooting a different bullet. It's got a different barrel length. You're going to need to do that all over again. You're going to need to know where those rounds are impacting. Now, is 
the deviation going to be enough that it is going to make a huge, major, critical difference, such as you've got this 50-yard zero that we're looking at on the screen, and you're taking that 100-yard shot. And let's say you're aiming for bad guy's face. Well, worst case, you're going to shoot him in the lower part of his throat or his chest, which is not a bad place to shoot. If you're aiming for the chest, you might be a high abdomen, maybe into the abdomen, again, depending on your weapon configuration and the bullets that you've chosen and the distance that you're shooting. But it's still going to be considered an effective hit. I will tell you from personal experience, I've done numerous two-gun competitions shooting a rifle and a pistol. And one of the things that will throw you off the most is shooting at bowling pins while having your weapon oriented in a sideways configuration. So again, you're laying your weapon down sideways on top of some sort of barricade and shooting that way, or you're in a strange prone position where your weapon is oriented to the side. Well, now you have to rotate this to the side because your rounds are no longer deviating up and down. They're now deviating left and right. And those bowling pins don't offer a lot of uh, surface area to hit. So depending on what part of it you're actually able to aim at and hit, you may nick it or you may miss it altogether or get a dead center hit. So that's a good way to practice. If you have the ability to shoot at something thin, maybe a two by four, again, a bowling pin you can set up, put the weapon sideways and shoot at it that way. And it'll really kind of test your skills and being able to judge distance versus the drop on your bullets. Hopefully you have gleaned some sort of information, knowledge, something useful out of this. If you did not know about this already, hopefully uh, you'll be able to use that and apply it to your specific scenario and weapon system. If you already knew everything that I've said in here and you think I'm an idiot, that's fine too. If there's anything that you think I missed, I didn't cover, you have questions about, or you feel like I should uh, cover in a little bit more detail, again, just let me know down below in the comments. I always try to respond to the comments as quickly as possible if I'm not busy, but I will get to them eventually. So again, hopefully you found this information somewhat useful, educational in your use case scenario. So again, get your stuff set up to where you want it, where you're happy with. You're not going to be swapping things out back and forth, changing it. Get settled on an ammunition type and again, learn where those rounds are impacting. It again could be the difference between life and death for somebody that you may be trying to save. So anyways, just a quick video today covering this topic that I thought was important. And again, I have experienced myself and uh, realizing the importance of it. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. I am gonna call the video here. So uh, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel the need to do. Again, let me know down below if you have any questions, anything I didn't cover you think that uh, I need to, or you have questions. If there's anything that I did or did not cover that you would like me to uh, talk about in more detail or you have a question about, just let me know down below. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.